Hi everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Tuesday afternoon as we talk politics, business. Now we're going to talk children's literature and illustrating. I have John Rocco, New York Times best-selling author and illustrator, will be at the Rhode Island Festival of Children's Books and Authors this Saturday at the Lincoln School. John, thank you for joining us today. Kate, thank you for having me. Across all the books over here, it's going to be a great day at Lincoln featuring a number of authors and illustrators. But before we even go into what you brought in here, just share with folks the John Rocco story because it, between the writing, between the illustrating, between the animation, um, I think you're that triple threat in sort of the, uh, the industry, if you will. Uh, bring folks up to speed as to where we got today. Uh, well, for the last, I would say, 15 years or so, I've been making children's books. And before that, I was an art director working on any number of projects from theme park rides at Disney to uh, I was an art director on the movie Shrek and uh, lots of other things, commercials and what have you. Uh, and about 15 years ago I decided I wanted to get back into children's books. It was my first love. I went to school here in Rhode Island and, and then in New York and uh, and yeah, the, so here we are talking about children's <laughs> books and, and authors and illustrators that get to leave their studio this Saturday to be out in the wild. And see the parents, see the kids. Yes. So I love the story of, again, Rhode Island, New York, California. What brought you back to Rhode Island? It, you know, it's, it's where my heart is. It's home. I grew up here. I, I clammed out in the Bay. Uh, I went to school here at RISD, just down the street. And, uh, you know, it, you always come back to the hearth, right? So, yeah, coming back here it was exciting. So before we go into the books, too, want folks to know illustrator of a very popular children's series your children might know of. Uh, yeah, the Percy Jackson and the Olympians, uh, and also the, the newest series by Rick Riordan uh, called Trials of Apollo. I do the cover illustrations for those books, and we also did a, several large format books with heavily illustrated um, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods and Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes. So for someone like myself who's got virtually zero artistic acumen. <laughs> from the illustration oh, side, <laughs> no, I'm very honest here. Uh, from the illustration side of things, I mean, between freehand and technology, I mean, what's, what's the method to your success? I, I don't know if there's a method, uh, but I primarily start off uh, traditionally using pencil on paper, always, mm. and then I'll bring it into a computer and color and, and add textures into my artwork that way. So it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, as I said, to the average lay person, I'm like, how do we get these you know, beautiful finished products? Oh, nice. And on Saturday, when folks all descend on the Lincoln School for the festival, what are they going to see from you, John? From me, well, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. Um, a couple of books that I had come out this year. Uh, one is a book called Camp Tiger. Uh, and this is a really special book, I think. Um, that was written by uh, Pulitzer Prize finalist uh, uh, Susan Choi. And it's a beautiful story about a boy going back to school. He's getting ready to enter first grade. And the, the family's going on their, their last camping trip of the summer. And so what happens is a tiger shows up at camp, uh, sort of a mystical tiger that kind of takes them through the journey of, of you know, the boy actually growing up, which is a hard thing for kids to want to grow up, but mm. uh, they, they go on lots of, lots of little adventures together. <laughs> it's interactive books. <laughs> Very interactive. Yeah. Um, so it's a wonderful book. And then I also, um, I'll be talking about another book that came out this year um, called Noah Builds an Ark, uh, written by Kate Banks and illustrated by myself. And this is about a boy getting his backyard ready for a hurricane, which is bringing lots of floodwaters into his yard. And so he builds an ark for the creatures that live in his backyard. And um, Speaking of weather. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I, growing up in Rhode Island, I was uh, part of the blizzard of 78. Um, and I decided to document that in a picture book called Blizzard, uh, which chronicles my story of going to the store uh, which was about a mile from my house, wearing uh, tennis shoes tied to my feet, 
to get groceries because we were all out of food. Um, so that's, oh I'll, my goodness. I may be talking about that a little How bit. How much of those, like, this, is that memory seared? How old were you at the time? I was 10. Uh, going on 11. Seared in yeah. your memory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All of my childhood memories kind of come up through my books, for sure. Um, and you made yeah. it out okay, no frostbite? No, no, I was good. I was good. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the hero of the story, right? Like, you went and you got the food. Yeah, it was It was, uh, It was. was a strange journey. And, and it also speaks of times when, you know, parents let their kids go do stuff. <laughs> you remember those days? <laughs> Um, and, and so my parents didn't think much about me, just like, I'm going on a trek. And uh, so, yeah, we were able to get out and explore and have adventures in the world. All those yeah. things. And as a 10-year-old child, I mean, how big and monumental and overwhelming, I'm sure, at the time, did the blizzard, like, what, what was your reaction? Like, yeah, oh, my was, goodness. <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty unbelievable. Um, I, mean, I think we got about four feet of snow overnight. And uh, we were locked into our house for nine days, you know, and without power. And, and I know all the fathers on our block had shoveled right up to the end of the driveway because they couldn't wait to get out, you know. <laughs> they couldn't wait to go back to work. And, um, and when the snowplows finally came, uh, I know it was kind of a celebratory moment for our neighborhood. In fact, my next-door neighbor ran out there with a, with a bottle of Jack Daniels and just shoved it in the snow waiting for the snowplow to stop and... And they all had a drink. Do you think that was the impetus for why there's runs on the store every time now that there's a storm, that everyone has to go get the milk and bread because it just could be that blizzard I again? I think so. You never know. It's New England, right? If you don't like the weather, wait Gotta five minutes. Gotta be prepared. But again, kids in magical weather events, everything is larger than life when you're a child. It's oftentimes the first thing that you yeah, encounter. Yeah, it's, it's the strongest it's memories yeah. you, you'll, you'll have are those from, from your childhood. So... You know, tapping into that is a great source for me to come up with book ideas. And speaking of a big book idea, something yeah. that goes outside of what an average child might know, but they've heard about, but right. really going beyond the confines of the childhood experience is how we got to the moon. Yeah, so this is a book that uh, actually won't be coming out till fall of next year, but um, at the book festival on Saturday, I will be talking about it for the first time in public. Um, it's a book that I uh, have been working on for several years now, and it's, it's about not just three guys walking on the moon, or two guys walking on the moon, I should say. Um, it, it's really, how did we get them there? And the science behind that, because the story of the Apollo missions that happened back in the late 60s and early 70s, though that story is such a great way to kind of teach science and engineering and, and math and all those things that they had to do to get them there. And it also talks about the people. I interviewed dozens of Apollo engineers um, from that era that were working on it and got their stories and was able to put those stories in the book as well. Wow, that's going to be a fantastic product when it's finished. What is that age group going to be geared towards, John, would you say? Uh, it's 10 and up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a book that an adult would enjoy as much as a child. So, yeah. Okay, so again, this coming Saturday, the Rhode Island Festival of Children's Books and Authors at the Lincoln School. Here we are, October. The holidays are right around the corner. There you go. And always a great time to think about gifts for children, nieces, nephews, grandkids, loved ones. Well, it's a fantastic opportunity to go come out and meet some of the, some, some of the great, I mean, the list of authors and illustrators they have coming uh, on Saturday is, is really profound. They're, they're some of the best, and, and some of my friends. Um, and to meet them in person and hear how they actually go about making their work is pretty fantastic.